Uh, my name's Melissa Tanner, and I'm with TNT Paranormal Investigators out of Chicago, Illinois. Um, I've been investigating the paranormal for about eight years now. Um, this team, team I started in 2009, so I've been with this team since then. You know, there wasn't one like one thing. I know some people have that one aha moment. Um, and for me, it was more of a combination of things. There's always been an interest. I grew up in a really small town in Missouri, and I, I'm someone that's lucky enough that I had my great-grandparents alive when I was a kid. And so they would always take us, you know, on adventures on the weekends and things, and my grandma would always tell us ghost stories. So I think it kind of started there. Um, grew up near a lot of Civil War battle sites, and so there was always, you know, that legend. I don't know if you've heard of the spook light in Joplin, but we would try to go see it as teenagers. Um, so there was always kind of that interest there. And then as I got older, I found out there were people that do this, and I didn't know there were. And so I started, you know, making friends in the field and things like that, and then it just kind of took off from there. I, w I wouldn't say I have just one. I mean, some some of the reasons why I do this um, are to educate people. So I like to have, um, you know, when those moments happen where I see someone becoming educated about the field so they're less scared of what's going on at their house, teaching them that there are certain noises like this time of the year with it being so cold outside. A lot of people are starting to have bangs in the night. Well, they're basically having something that's called frost quaking. It's where the ground itself gets so cold, it makes a big pop sound. Um, and so trying to educate people, I think that is a biggie. Um, I've got to go to some really cool locations. I've got to go to Waverly Hills four times. Um, Tinker Swiss Cottage is a place near us that's um, one of my favorites to go to. So I get to see a lot of historical locations that you wouldn't get to see if you didn't do this kind of thing. And I think that's part of um, what draws me to it. And then my team, we actually deal a lot with client cases. And so there's a lot of the client cases I can't discuss, but part of what I like doing is trying to help them get over fears or coming up with reasons why the things that are happening at their house um, so that they ha are less fearful of being there or going to work, depending on where the situation is. So I don't have like one story. It's a combination of things that I feel has brought me here um, and, you know, kind of made me the investigator that I've become. For me, um, probably over 110. Um, we we average about three a month on this team, and so I, I pretty much go on all the investigations. Um, but I would I would say it's it's well over 110. You know, I've recently got turned on to uh, we affectionately call it. The the nerd gun, but it's Dave Roundtree has an oscilloscope set up that he um, put together that we are now utilizing. And so it's an oscilloscope with an EMF meter at the end where you have, where you can actually see the, the, the sine waves, the frequency of the EMFs themselves. And so it actually helps you distinguish man-made EMF for sure versus something that's not man-made. And so I would say that's probably my favorite tool at the moment. Um, I, I mean, I would say it's probably the investigation itself. Um, like, I, like I mentioned, if we do get to go to historic locations, I love seeing the architecture as well as participating in the investigation. Um, I, I think from da the data review perspective, definitely when you get that one thing or the, the two things that you cannot weed out, it, it, that's a really cool moment to actually like, like, whoa, where did that voice come from? I know it's not one of my teammates um and, and so I, I would say that the, the investigation itself is probably my favorite part but then during data review it would be when you actually capture something you can't explain and, and that's a really good question and if you're someone looking into going to this field we do protection and it's based on your religious beliefs or your non-religious religious beliefs whatever you decide but we do protection when we go into investigation we um state our intent before we start the investigation um and then before we go home we do further protection um to make sure that that nothing and goes home. Am I scared of it? No. I, I honestly believe if you walk into something with a fear that it could happen, it could happen. Um, but I'm cautious, and I don't go in with arrogance or anything like that. I go in knowing that there, there could be things there that I can't see that could affect me. 
You know, I think the biggest the biggest tips, if you're going to, there, there's two. If you're going to deal with clients, make sure you are 100% sure of what's going on before you tell them something that's going to make them more fearful to be in their home or business. And two, you do not need to go spend a lot of money money on equipment to do the investigation. You yourself are one of the best instruments, paying attention, uh, being aware of what's going on around you, um, sitting in, the, in silence and listening. If you are going to invest in equipment, the, the two tools I would say that I would put money in is a really good EMF detector like a tri-field meter and a really good digital recorder um, because that's probably where your two biggest things are going to be the EMF detector to help you weed out things and the recorder because most most of the data that we've collected over the last uh, eight years have been audio based. You know, over the years, my viewpoint on on them have changed. Um, I actually just went to a conference this, this past weekend where there was a woman there talking about it. And you know, I think it's like with anything: um, if you give something the power it can happen if you believe in something enough it can happen we don't use them because we're more of a technology based uh, group and I can't I can't say that someone didn't manipulate it um, but do I believe I'm going to be possessed by the devil if I use it not necessarily she actually talked about a story that I didn't even realize that the fear actually started in the movie The Exorcist in the movie The Exorcist, they actually had a Ouija board, and that's when Linda Blair's character started being affected. And after that is when the fear of Ouija board started, because before that it was just a Procter and Gamble game that, you, or Milton, Bur you know, Bradley, whichever company. But anyway, they they had that, and it was a tool that you could purchase and have fun, and they'd have them at parties, and so it kind of came. But my my warning is, even though it, it was meant to be a game, again, it could be intent. You. You be careful what you ask for. If you ask for stuff negative to come through, you possibly could have some negative experiences. That could be true with using a digital recorder as well. But I think you've got to be careful um, with any of this investigation because that it could be harmful. I mean, it, as far as a digital recorder, uh, I'm kind of partial to Zooms. Um, because of the mic sensitivity um, and the quality of the recording that you get, so Zoom Handy recorders. As far as the mel, um, like the mel meters, K2s, tri-fields, so all the EMF detectors, tri-field I like the best because it is a tri-axis meter. If I was to go with a single axis meter, I would probably go with a mel only because you can also get temperature with it as well as a lot of them come with flashlights and even an additional device. Um, I think that's probably the, the two the two biggest things. Um, in my team, we mic each other up. Like I, every single team has, a member has a recorder on them with a re uh, microphone so that we can weed ourselves out. So I, I think you can never have enough audio equipment only because you would be surprised how much noise your own body makes. Maybe when you walk, even there are people on my team talk to ourselves. It's just, I think it's a normal part of human nature. Um, and as much as you tag, you don't always tag everything. So a recording equipment is definitely key. Um, there's a lot of stuff out there I would stay away from um, just because they're not really, you know, that great of a tool. Um, but that, that's, again, EMF detectors and digital recorders would be my two favorite uh, tools to use utilize and then my the brands would be the tri-field and zoom um we went to ohio state reformatory in mansfield ohio and so for your viewers if you have ever, ever seen the movie shawshank redemption it's the prison where they filmed that movie and it was me and two other females and we were going um upstairs above the chapel which became like the tuberculosis wing of for their uh the prison so if someone got tb they would take them there and we'd been doing an EVP session, and one of the women didn't want to go up there in the first place. She's like, I just have a bad feeling. And so we talked her into it, and we went up there. We did an EVP session, and, and then all of a sudden, the atmosphere around us kind of changed. It went from being a friendly environment to almost like the feeling like, okay, you've worn out your welcome. It's time for you to leave. And as we were getting ready to leave, we were probably up, I don't know, it's four or five stories, and you have to go down staircase to get out. I was the last one in the line going down the stairs, and it felt like I had a hand on my back guiding me out of there. And if, if you know what I mean by that, like when a, a man will kind of put the hand on the back of a lady to, to lead her around a restaurant or whatever, that's what it felt like. It was like a hand saying it was time to go. 
And then the further we got down the stairs towards the bottom, the more the feeling got ominous, if you will. Now, keep in mind, we're females in an all-male prison, so I'm not saying it's demonic. It probably was just one of the guys there that was probably not a good guy in the first place, and that's how he ended up in there. As we get to the bottom, you have to turn left or right, and we decided to turn right. And when we did, I have a camcorder on the whole time. A black shape, uh, mass, flies over the person's head right in front of me, and the camera captured it. We didn't see it. The camera captured it. And it was the first time I've ever had to, like, go outside and shake it off, if you know what I mean. I had to go outside, kind of, like, get my mind in a different mindset before I was ready to go back in. And it's taken me a while before I would say I will go back there, but I would definitely go back now. Um, it is more, probably one of the more active locations we've ever been. Almost every female, so if you're a lady watching, almost every female had an experience either feeling like a guy breathed on their neck um, or would walk up on them. But for me, that was probably the most profound experience. And it's part of the reason why I talk a lot now about being careful when you investigate no provoking. My team, we do not provoke um, and, and being really careful. And, and I'm not saying I was provoking, but we were females in an all-male area. And I think our, our presence there was maybe enough to upset whoever it was that that was just telling us it was time to go. And so that, that that's where I be, that's the moment that I started becoming a lot more cautious with protection and the procedures I followed during the investigations. You no, know, I don't know. I, I'm still trying to find out that answer. Um, I, you know, there's so many theories, and you, you've probably heard them all. I, and, and, and I think it's probably going to be a combination of all of those things, but I don't think I'm going to know the answers until I pass away myself. Um, I, I would like to, to think that it's because they wanted to stay here versus they got trapped here. Um, and, you know, some, some of the places we've been... Clearly, the spirits love the location, and you can tell the more we do, con um, more they do construction, the more we've done cleanups. The activity seems to increase because they seem happy. So, personally, I would like to think it's because they wanted to stay here for some reason versus they just fear out leave or they're somehow trapped. That is a very good question, and I actually call myself a skeptical believer because do I believe there's a possibility of paranormal? Yes. Am I skeptical of every? claims that we hear yes and that's why i like to try to get to the bottom of things before i jump to the paranormal that was one of the reasons why we started miking up every single person so that i could be closest to 100 percent as i could of each particular piece of audio that it is um something that was not one of us making the noise um so, so i'm skeptical but i also know that i have seen and felt things that i can't explain and so I believe there is that possibility that things outside of the three-dimensional world we live in now exist. Sure. Um, you know, we do events all the time. Um, I, I, I speak regularly at various library um, events and conferences. Probably the next big event is we have a conference that we're going to in Springfield, Missouri on March 28th, and I'll be speaking on provoking and the dangers of provoking. Um, in April, um, April 11th, we have an investigate with us this event at a former bottling company and so for those people that can't have a team or don't have a team and like to go on occasional investigations we do these plus it helps raise money for the location and so that's april 11th and then we have a lot of library speaking engagements that are free to the public happening this fall so if they want to go out to our website that would be the best way to find out all the events and if you go out to um, tntparanormal.com slash events or the events page, then you would see a list of all the events we have coming up, what dates they are. And since we're in Chicago, they'll be in the Chicagoland area. We don't stick to just downtown. We're in the suburbs, so it could be anywhere. So there might be a location that's close to you. So what are 